All right, folks, we're back, and we're continuing our oxidation and reduction chapter today by learning how to balance these redox equations. Now, there are lots of different methods to balance redox equations. One of them is called the half reaction method, and many teachers prefer that. I don't. Um, I use a different method. Uh, I've done it for years this way, and I think it's the easiest way. Now, if you have a teacher that likes the half reaction method and you end up preferring it, then by all means, go with that. Let me just show you this alternative method to balancing redox equations, and, and it might be helpful. So step one, when you balance a redox equation, is go ahead and assign oxidation numbers to each element in the reaction. We've been doing that now for a couple of videos, and you should be pretty good and pretty quick at it, actually. Step two is not always needed. Sometimes the atoms that changed oxidation numbers, they don't balance themselves. So step two is to balance, at this point, the atoms that changed oxidation numbers. Not all the atoms, obviously, but just those that changed oxidation numbers. Most of the time, they're already balanced. So you don't always have to do step two. Step three, this is my favorite step, you balance electrons lost with electrons gained. So according to the law of conservation of mass, the number of electrons lost have to be gained somewhere, and so electrons lost and gained need to be balanced in step three, and I'll show you how to do that. Step four, we have to balance the ionic charge in the equation as well. Remember, atoms need to balance in an equation, but so does the ionic charge. Now, if it's an acidic solution, we will use protons, H pluses, to balance the ionic charge. If it's a basic solution, we will use hydroxides to balance the ionic charge. If you're unsure, or it doesn't state, whether it is an acid or a basic solution, we assume acidic solutions. Step five, uh, you balance all of your hydrogen atoms um, in the equation, with, on both sides of the equation, using water molecules. And step six, check your oxygens. If you've done your work correctly to this point, all the oxygens will balance. If they don't, you did something wrong, and the best thing to do is to start from step one. Okay, just start right at the beginning. Um, and finally, the last step, this is another one that's not often used, but sometimes there are non-reacting elements, and they need to be balanced at the very end. But step seven, um, we don't do oftentimes. Now, if you follow these, follow these seven steps, you should be able to, to balance all redox equations. So the best way to learn this is by working through examples. And so if you Follow with me to the next page, to example seven. We have several for us to do. Uh, letter A, I've decided to go with the net ionic equation. Sometimes it's easier to balance these in their net ionic form first, and then we can use the coefficients from the balanced equation, um, from the balanced net ionic equation, to plug into the molecular equation and balance it that way. So let's start by assigning each atom an oxidation number. So copper is in its elemental state. Its oxidation number is zero. Um, and the nitrate ion, oxygen, is two negative. We have to have a one negative left over, so that would make your nitrogen a five positive. On the other side of the equation, you can see copper is two plus. That's the copper, two plus ion. And in NO2, um, oxygen is two negative, and that would make that nitrogen positive four. Right? All right, step one is finished. We've assigned each atom in the reaction an oxidation number. Now let's check to make sure the atoms that change oxidation numbers are balanced. So copper goes from zero to positive two, and there's one copper on each side. Those are balanced. Nitrogen goes from positive five to positive four. That changes oxidation number, and there's one nitrogen on both sides. So the atoms that change oxidation number are balanced. Step two is done. Step three, balance electrons lost with electrons gained. So let's take a look at copper. I like to draw lines at this point. Do you see how copper goes from zero to positive two? Well, that means that two electrons were lost. And the nitrogen goes from positive five to positive four. One electron was gained. 
Now obviously, two and one are not the same number. The electrons lost and gained do not balance. So what I need to do is double the number of nitrogen-containing species so that I will have two gained and two lost. So I'm going to double the number of nitrates and double the number of NO2s. So now I have two, nitri two nitrogens that are each gaining one electron for a total of two electrons gained, which balances my two electrons lost. All right, next up is balancing the ionic charge. So, what do I mean by that? Well, copper is not an ion. It doesn't have a charge. The nitrate has a negative one charge, and there are two of them. So I have two negatives on the reactant side. On the product side, copper, as we've seen, is two positive, and the NO2 is neutral. So I have two positive on the product side. That charge does not balance. Now, this doesn't say whether it's acidic or neutral. However, we have nitric acid here. It is acidic. Um, so we will balance it with H pluses. So I need to add four H pluses to the left side to give me two positives um, as an ionic charge on both sides. So I have to actually write in plus two H pluses here. Uh, sorry, not two. Four H pluses. So now the ionic charge is two positive on both sides. The next step, we will balance all hydrogens using water. And I have four hydrogens now on the left side, none on the right. So I'm going to put two H2O molecules in here. And that gives me four hydrogens on both sides. Now if I've done this correctly, the oxygen should balance automatically. So I have six oxygens on the left side. I have four oxygens plus two more, six on the right side. Yes, that balances. Now, since I have the ionic equation here, I can use these coefficients to balance my molecular equation above. So I need four H pluses, so I'll put four in front of HNO3. I need one copper, so I don't need to put anything in front of copper. I need two nitrates, but I already have four of them because of the four I put in front of HNO3. I need one copper. I need two NO2, so I'll put a two there, and I need two waters, so I'll put a two there. So now my molecular equation is balanced as well. Alrighty, well I've balanced the first redox equation for you. Now I don't expect you to be able to do letter B right away. So let me do that one for you, and then maybe you can try letter C on your own. Okay? So here we go. Um, let's go ahead and assign everybody an oxidation number here. Let me change colors of my pen, so this might show up a bit better. Chlorine is negative one, hydrogen's positive one. Oxygen's negative two, hydrogen's positive one. That makes that nitrogen positive five. Over here, oxygen's negative two. Chlor uh, hydrogen can only be positive one, and that makes that chlorine positive one. My oxygen in NO is negative two. That makes my nitrogen positive two. And in water, my oxygen's negative two, and that makes the hydrogen positive one. Alrighty, let's balance the atoms whose oxidation number changed. So I have chlorine that goes from negative one to positive one, and there's one on both sides. I have nitrogen that goes from positive five to positive two, and there's one nitrogen on both sides. No other atoms changed oxidation numbers. So they're balanced. Step three, let's balance electrons lost with gained. So chlorine goes from negative one to positive one. So two electrons had to be lost for that to happen. And the nitrogen goes from positive five to positive two. Three electrons had to be gained. Now two and three obviously don't balance. So we need to double the number of nitrogen containing species by putting a two here and a two there. And we need to triple the number of chlorine species by putting a three there and a three there. So now I have a total of six electrons lost and six electrons gained. Next step is pretty easy. It's balancing the ionic charge. And as you notice, I don't have any ions on either side of the equation. So my charge is zero on the left side and zero on the right side, so I don't need to add any H pluses or OH minuses. And the last step is to balance all hydrogens by using water. 
So let's see, I have three hydrogens and two more is five. I have three hydrogens and two more is five on the right side. So that equation should be balanced and sure enough, it is. Okay, let me do another one for you before I cut you loose. How does that sound? I still feel that perhaps we need a bit more instruction here. So let me do letter C with you and then I'll have you take a crack at letter D. All right, step one, let's go ahead and balance, or assign everybody an oxidation number. Uh, chlorine's more electronegative than tin. Its charge is negative one. That makes the tin positive four on the reactant side. Iron's an element on this side, so its oxidation number is zero. On the other side, my chlorine's negative one and my tin is positive two. And my chlorine's negative one and my iron is positive three. Now let's balance the atoms whose oxidation number changed. 10 went from 4 plus to 2 plus. There's one 10 on both sides, they balance. Iron went from 0 to 3 plus. There's one iron on both sides, they balance as well. Now balance electrons gained with lost. So 10 goes from 4 plus to 2 plus. To do that, two electrons had to be gained. Iron goes from 0 to 3 plus. To do that, three electrons had to be lost. Uh, two and three have six, the number six in common, so I'll double the number of iron species by putting a two here and there, and I will triple the number of tin species by putting a three here and three there. So electrons gained equal electrons lost. Now once again, we don't have any ions on either side of the equation, so the ionic charge on the reactant side is zero, and the product side is zero. Obviously, the charge balances, so I don't need to add any H pluses or OH minuses. And then we balance all hydrogens using water. We don't have any hydrogens anywhere, so this equation is now balanced. Pretty easy, isn't it? All right, why don't you try letter D without my help? Go ahead and pause the video. Go as far as you can. You might get frustrated after a couple of minutes, and that's totally and completely understandable. Uh, then come back and watch the video. See what you did right or see what you did wrong. See you in a second. All right. Welcome back. Now let's assign each atom an oxidation number. Let's go ahead and change colors again here. So it looks like oxygen is two negative in the perchlorate ion. That makes the chlorine positive seven. My bromine's negative one. All right, it's the bromide ion, actually. My chlorine's negative one. It's the chloride ion. And here I have bromine in its elemental form, so its oxidation number is zero. All right, step two we have to do this time because the atoms that changed oxidation number do not balance this time. You'll notice I have one chlorine on both sides, but I only have one bromine on this side and two on the other. So I do need to put a two in front of the Br negative. So that atom that changed oxidation numbers is now balanced. All righty, now let's balance electrons gained with loss. So I'm gonna draw a line from this chlorine to that chlorine. Goes from seven positive to one negative. Holy cow, to do that, eight electrons have to be gained, right? Going from positive seven to negative one, eight electrons have to be gained. My bromine went from negative one to zero. So each bromine lost one electron, but there are two bromines that do that. So we have two electrons lost total. To balance that, we'll go ahead and quadruple the number of bromine species. So I'll put a four in front of Br2, and I'm gonna change this two to an eight in front of Br negative. So now I have eight lost and eight gained. Now we can balance the ionic charge. So I have a perchlorate ion, which is negative one, eight bromide ions, which is negative eight, for a total of negative nine so far. On my product side, I have one chloride ion, which is negative one, and bromine is neutral. So I need to add a total of eight H pluses to the reactant side, so I have a negative one ionic charge on both sides. So I'm gonna write that eight H pluses right in the equation up here. 
And then finally, I'll balance all hydrogens using water. And I have eight hydrogens on the left side, so that means I have to add four H2Os on the right side. If we check our oxygens, if they balance, we've done this correctly. So I have four oxygens on this side and four oxygens on the product side. Yep, that is a balanced redox equation. How did you do? Yeah, I know. They're sort of kind of tough. You'll get better at this, though. The more we do, the better you get, and the faster you do it. And they actually become sort of kind of fun to do. All right, let's do one more before we wrap this video up. Try letter E without my help. Get as far as you can. Then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. Okay? All right, welcome back. Let's assign everybody an oxidation number. I have uh, negative 1 for my iodine, don't I? Um, for the permanganate ion, oxygen is negative 2, and the manganese is positive 7. Um, on the product side, iodine is in its elemental state, so it has an oxidation number of 0. And MnO2, oxygen is negative 2, and that makes the manganese positive 4. Looks like we have to do step 2 again, because the atoms that changed oxidation number do not all balance. I have one iodine here and two on this side, so I need to put a two in front of the iodide ion there. One manganese and one manganese. Okay, they balance. Next up, let's balance electrons lost with gained. So I negative, the I goes from negative one to zero. Each one loses one, but there are two iodines involved. Remember, there are two iodines there. So if each one of them loses one, isn't that a total of two lost? Manganese goes from 7 plus to 4 plus, so 3 are gained. 2 and 3 have the number 6 in common, so let's double the number of manganese species. So I'll put a 2 here and a 2 there, and we will triple the number of iodine species. So I'll put a 3 there, and that 2, uh, we're going to erase that. That becomes a 6 now, because we have to triple it. So electrons gained and lost now balance. Now let's balance the ionic charge. We have six I negatives, so six negative, two permanganates, two, ne two more negatives for a total of eight negative on the left side. On the right side, we don't have any ions, so the charge is zero. Now did you notice this was basic solution? That means we balance the ionic charge using hydroxides. So I have to actually write in eight hydroxide ions, so I end up with eight negatives on the product side. So I'm just going to write those in plus eight. 8 OH minuses. And then finally, the last step is balancing all hydrogens with water. And I don't have any hydrogens on my reactant side, but I have these 8 on my product side. So I need to write in 4 H2Os on my reactant side. And now that equation is balanced. You getting better? All right. We'll try a couple more examples on, a, on the next video. I'll be a bit shorter for you. See you soon. Bye-bye.